Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our live coverage of the latest mission from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. I'm Will Robinson Smith. I'll be providing our commentary for the duration of this coverage. We're broadcasting from the Space Flight Now News Bureau here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. I'm joined tonight by Stephen Young, who's running the technical aspects of the show. Adam Bernstein is out manning the tracking cameras and doing some still photography as well. We're now T minus 59 minutes on the dot to the liftoff of the Starlink 6 25 mission, the second attempt for SpaceX to launch this particular mission after they had to stand down yesterday evening. At about T minus 30 seconds, they came across an issue with the stage separator. But because they had already fueled and gone through the full countdown, they had to stop down and pivot to their 24-hour turnaround, which is how we ended up here tonight with what promises to be a potentially a very pretty sunset launch. If you're not already, be sure to follow Adam Bernstein on X, formerly known as Twitter. Michael Kane is off tonight, but you can also follow his handle there on your screen both do excellent launch photography as well as some other photography on their own time. So if you want to see some great pictures from tonight and from future missions, be sure to give them a follow and tag along for their many space adventures through photography. Now T minus 57 minutes, 39 seconds and counting. At the center of your screen, of course, is the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket at the heart of Space Launch Complex 40, otherwise known as Slick 40. In a little under an hour, SpaceX will be trying again for that launch of Starlink 6-25. This will be the 31st dedicated mission launching SpaceX's upgraded Starlink satellites up to low Earth orbit. The company is currently targeting a T-0 liftoff time of 7.20 p.m. Eastern. For our viewers joining from around the world, that's 2317 UTC. If you'd like to help support our coverage of the space program, there's a quick and easy way to do that. If you just hit the like button, click subscribe if you haven't already to the channel, and ring the bell to get notifications when new videos are posted, and you don't miss any of our streams. Of course, we can't do these broadcasts without wonderful viewers like you, so thanks to all of you who are joining us live. We're also powered by our channel members, folks like DW, who is joining us this evening at the pad leader level. Welcome, DW, to channel membership. It includes, of course, the ability to watch all of our launches in 4K, as well as discounts from our online shop, shop.spacelightnow.com, and access to member-only videos. Our hearing from SpaceX just now, noting that we are less than an hour until the launch of the 23 Starlink satellites on board. SpaceX notes, as I was just about to say, weather looking good for liftoff. So SpaceX sounds like they are in good spirits and targeting that 720 liftoff tonight. Another great way to get in the conversation about this and other launches is through the use of the YouTube Super Chat feature not only help support what we do at Spaceflight now, but it's a fun way to join the conversation. Of course, if your comment or question is appropriate, appropriate to be read aloud on the broadcast, I'd love to bring you into the conversation about space exploration. We're now T-minus 55 minutes, 18 seconds and counting. A little under 20 minutes away from the point in which the launch director would give the go for the startup propellant load. 
but of course because SpaceX is not providing mission audio we won't hear that call out or any other call outs for that matter until the last five minutes of the broadcast or of the countdown I should say we will rely on our extensive experience in covering SpaceX and Falcon 9 missions to guide you through the count, let you know the visual markers to watch out for. SpaceX is running the countdown from its Hangar X site here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, the facility where they refurbish Falcon boosters, prepare them for future flights. As you can tell with this one, it's got a little character on it. This will be the eighth flight of this particular booster, tail number 1077. We'll go over its history in just a little bit. Again, SpaceX is targeting a 7.20 p.m. launch time tonight. Got some great views of the pad from our friend Chuck Briggs there. Some nice uh, flock of birds trailing across the screen. Birds in front, a bird in the back. Looking forward to lifting off at 7.20. Of course, SpaceX does have seven additional backup opportunities within this launch window. It lasts from 7.46 until 10.22 p.m. Eastern Time. And if for some reason tonight doesn't pan out as last night did not, SpaceX also has eight backup opportunities during a Halloween launch window that runs from 6.55 p.m. until 9.26 p.m. Eastern tomorrow evening. As SpaceX noted, and as we are certainly seeing here on Florida's Atlantic coast, weather tonight should be excellent for liftoff. It's been a fairly clear day here on the Space Coast. 45th Weather Squadron forecast a 95% favorable weather forecast for liftoff during the window. The only thing they're watching are a little bit of cumulus clouds out there. If needed, the backup launch opportunity tomorrow about the same. It's 90% uh, favorable weather conditions with, again, cumulus clouds being the only watch item. No T minus 52 minutes, 46 seconds and counting. Want to welcome Camper News Network to channel membership at the mission specialist level. Thank you so much for supporting us, Camper News. Also want to note a couple of super chats that came in. Uh, Norman Reitzel, one of our other great channel members, the $2 Super Chat donation and a cool pair emoji. Thank you so much, Norman. And Mel Roberts-Herald joining us once again this evening. Hey, Mel. Hope you're doing well. As you did mention that you were heading back to Chicago this morning, she says, watching from my chilly Chicagoland living room tonight. Not as cool as sitting in Coco, but so glad y'all bring this to so many of us, and we are certainly happy to do so and very appreciative of the support in helping with that endeavor. And lastly for now, Roseanne DeVasto with a $10 super chat saying, nice shot. I'm assuming that is kudos to Chuck Briggs for his shot there. Also, Adam Bernstein working hard, making sure our cameras at the press site are all in ship shape, getting ready for a launch coming up in about 51 and a half minutes. As we continue on through the countdown, let's take a look at the countdown timeline that we'll be expecting this evening. T minus 38 minutes, we'll he that's when the uh, result of the go-no-go no go poll will be given. Again, we will not hear that, but if that go is in fact given, propellant load will start at T minus 35 minutes when Rocket grade kerosene or RP-1 will be loaded onto both the first and second stages of the rocket. At the same time, liquid oxygen will also start flowing aboard the first stage. T minus 16 minutes, liquid oxygen will start flowing onto the second stage of the Falcon 9. Before that, at about T minus 20 minutes, 20 seconds, we'll see the so-called big vent from the strong back at the launch pad. Happens as the feed lines are chilled. T minus seven minutes, the chill down of the nine Merlin engines will get underway. 
It involves flowing a small amount of liquid oxygen through the plumbing and the turbo pumps. It protects the engines from the risk of thermal shock and damage during the startup sequence. About six minutes before liftoff, the first stage kerosene tank should be full. Then at T-minus four and a half minutes, we'll see the strong back retract from the Falcon 9 begin. It'll start with the clamp arms opening up just underneath the payload fairings. Then the transporter erector will lean back about a degree and a half and stay in that position until liftoff, at which point it will pull back much more aggressively to clear the way for the Falcon 9's liftoff. About two minutes before launch, liquid oxygen should be fully loaded onto the vehicle, at which point the Falcon 9 will be fully fueled with 1 million pounds of propellant. And in the final 60 seconds, the control of the countdown will be handed over from the ground sequencer to the Falcon 9's onboard flight computers. Those propellant tanks will be brought up to flight pressure. About 45 out, the launch director will give their go for liftoff, and the engine ignition command will be issued at T minus 3 seconds. Of course, you didn't get to that point yesterday, but here's hoping for tonight. And naturally, if all nine engines are healthy and do in fact ignite, the flight computer will give the hold down clamps the command to release the Falcon 9 for a liftoff at T0. Currently targeting 720 tonight, coming up in 48 minutes. 42 seconds and counting. Now T minus 45 minutes, 40 seconds and counting. Again, coming up at T minus 38 minutes is when they will make the call on the startup propellant load. T minus 35 minutes, so about 10 minutes from now is when fueling would begin, assuming everything is on track and they are ready to do so. And 
as we go ahead and wait for signs of the start of propellant load. Let's talk a little bit about where this rocket will be going. I see some folks in the chat were asking about the trajectory. Let's talk about that, shall we? The Falcon 9, of course, will be lifting off from the pad here at Space Launch Complex, or Slick 40, at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. It will fly in a southeast trajectory towards the Caribbean following stage separation. The first stage will land on one of SpaceX's three drone ships. The one that is still patiently waiting out in the Atlantic is Just Read the Instructions. The upper stage will continue on with the Starlink satellites. The fairing halves will jettison a bit downrange of this map as well. SpaceX, of course, using one of its two East Coast recovery vessels to scoop up those fairing halves. Tonight, they're using Bob. It nicknamed... That ship nicknamed uh, Bob, as well as the other one on the Atlantic side, Doug, named after former NASA astronauts Bob Bacon and Doug Hurley, the duo of the Demo-2 mission from back in May 2020. Now T-minus 43 minutes, 48 seconds and counting. I want to thank channel member Norman Reitzel for a couple of Super Chat donations there. Uh, saying it's 5 degrees Celsius in South Texas, which sounds downright frigid. Hope we've got a nice coat there. Oh, he says in the second Super Chat, he's got a heater on under his desk. So hopefully that's enough to keep your feet warm there, Norman. Sorry, it's so darn cold. Now T minus 42 minutes, 57 seconds and counting. So we are just about four or so minutes away from the call of the launch director on whether or not to start propellant load. Let's take a look at where this mission will fall in line for SpaceX as soon as it does launch. After it's lifted off, this will have been the eighth flight of this particular booster, tail number 1077. It's on target to be the 268th Falcon 9 launch to date. This will be the 74th Falcon 9 launch of 2023, the 212th Falcon booster reflight, or a booster that has flown at least once, going for another attempt. This will be SpaceX's 78th orbital launch of 2023, its 90th in the last 365 days, the 151st SpaceX orbital launch from Pad 40, the 206th overall orbital launch from that pad, and last but not least, this will be the 59th orbital launch from Cape Canaveral in this year, counting launches between both Cape Canaveral Space Force Station as well as here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. A T minus 41 minutes, 15 seconds and counting. for a graphical representation of SpaceX's flight history. Here's another look at that from 2010 all the way up to this year. You can see how much over the last few years they've really gone gangbusters as far as the number of launches. 61 and then all of 2022, 77 so far in 23 with number 78 on tap tonight. Coming up in just a little over 40 minutes.
at T minus 39 minutes, eight seconds and counting. I want to thank the more than 3,500 of you that are joining us live. If you haven't already, a great way to help support is quick and easy and free to do. Just hit the like button. It allows the YouTube algorithm to allow more folks to find our live stream coverage. As we are now less than 40 minutes to lift off. In about 40 or so seconds is when, of course, the launch director will make the call on the start of fueling. Keep an eye on the base of the Falcon 9 rocket for signs of frost forming. That little bit of frost ring, sometimes you'll see some vapor as uh, the super cold propellants are loaded onto the Falcon 9 vehicle and they meet the warm Florida air. As far as what's being launched tonight, of course, this is another batch of SpaceX's Starlink Internet satellites. This is a file photo of what the Starlink V2 mini satellites look like when they're in their launch configuration. This particular photo taken before another Starlink launch, not the one that's going off tonight. As I mentioned earlier, this will be the 31st launch to date of these V2 minis. This will also be the 51st Starlink launch in 2023. Each of these V2 minis comes in at about 1,760 pounds or 800 kilograms. After the solar panels unfurl, they have a wingspan of 100 feet or 30 meters. They use argon hull thrusters for in-orbit maneuvers and were built in Redmond, Washington near Seattle. Now, while SpaceX hasn't shared a rendering or a photo of what one of these Starlink V2 minis look like on orbit, do have, albeit a bit of a grainy photo, but this image taken by a satellite of Australian company HEO Robotics earlier this year. You can see the two solar panels extending from the main body of the satellite, a bit of a different design from the Starlink version 1 satellites. Now T minus 36 minutes, 31 seconds and counting. We're about a minute and a half away from the start of the propellants flowing aboard the Falcon 9 rocket again, assuming that SpaceX has given the go for the start of propellant mode. We have no indication to the contrary at this point that fueling won't start in the next 48 seconds from now. I think I'll be sure to keep a close eye at the base of the Falcon 9 rocket. Again, if you can look toward the bottom there, where you see the the black section at the very base go up a little bit. It's sort of like a darker gray charcoal. Then you see that hard line and then it becomes a little bit of a lighter gradient of silver or gray. Right about there is where the frost ring will start to form on the outside of the rocket. So keep a close eye on that part of the launch vehicle as feeling is set to start in the next two seconds. Of course, we won't see it immediately. It takes about a minute or two for it to really be prominent enough for it to be noticeable. But that'll be a good sign that feeling is, in fact, moving forward.
T minus 32 minutes, 52 seconds and counting. As we await signs on the Falcon 9 rocket, that fueling is in fact in motion. Let's talk a little bit about the Starlink V2 minis versus their predecessor for a moment the version 1.5 satellites. These min V2 minis have four times the capacity of Starlink version 1.5. They introduced E-band for backhaul. They feature upgraded phased array antennas. They're notably heavier, 2.6 times heavier, in fact. And they use argon hull thrusters for in-orbit maneuverings, replacing the previously used Krypton thrusters. Here's a view of what one of those looks like during a test. As of their latest update, SpaceX noted that it has more than 2 million Starlink Internet customers around the world, available in more than 60 countries. The map on the left-hand side of your screen shows the availability of Starlink in various spots around the world. The lightest blue shade there, that is where Starlink service is available. The mid shade is waitlist, darkest shade coming soon. And of course, the gray is where it's unavailable. If you take a look at the Falcon 9 rocket there, now at the center of your screen, you see that frost ring forming, as I mentioned it would. That shows that fueling is, in fact, underway, and SpaceX committing to the planned liftoff time at 7.20 tonight, which is certainly good news if you're not wanting to stay up too terribly late to watch this launch, or, as was the case last night, see them scrub and stand down and look for another opportunity. Either way, we'll get an answer in just a little over 30 minutes from now. T minus 29 minutes, 29 seconds and counting. At this point in time, helium also now being loaded into the pressure vessels on the first stage. The helium is used to pressurize the main propellant tanks during flight. Also want to thank Brad Hedinger for a wonderful $5 Super Chat donation, one of our regulars. Thanks for joining us again this evening, Brad says good evening will and space flight now friends continued thanks for all you do well thank you brad for continuing to support us in our endeavors in covering the space industry we certainly enjoy bringing these launches live to you and helping fill the time with some good information as we get closer to liftoff
Now T minus 25 minutes, 13 seconds and counting. As I mentioned, this will be the eighth launch of this booster when it does fly. Let's go ahead and step through the booster history briefly before the big event begins. <clears throat> Excuse me, coming up in a little less than five minutes from now. First launch of this booster happened to be supporting a crew mission, the Crew 5 flight that launched back on October 5th, 2022. Sent the Crew Dragon Endurance up to the International Space Station along with its four members. Distinct in the fact that it sent up the first cosmonaut amid the commercial crew era. And Commander NASA astronaut Nicole Mann became the first indigenous woman to go to space with this mission. The next flight came up on January 18, 2023, with the launch of the GPS-3 Space Vehicle 06 satellite. That series of satellites manufactured by Lockheed Martin and nicknamed for famous explorers. This one was named Amelia Earhart. Launch number three came a month later on February 18th when it launched the Inmarsat 6F2 satellite. Back in August, Viasat released a statement saying that the 16th or that the I6F2 satellite, quote, suffered a power subsystem anomaly during its orbit raising phase. Viasat acquired Inmarsat back in May of this year. Moving right along, the fourth launch of B-1077 was on March 29th. That was launching 56 Starlink satellites on the Starlink 5-10 mission. The fifth launch came on June 5th with another Dragon flight, this time of the cargo variety. This was SpaceX's 28th Commercial Resupply Services, or CRS, mission sent up 7,000 pounds of research and supplies up to the International Space Station. Coming up on another CRS mission, targeting liftoff on the 5th, just a little after 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time. The sixth launch of this booster was on August 3rd when it launched the Galaxy 37 slash Horizons 4 satellite for Intelsat. This was part of the company's Constellation refresh to meet FCC requirements. And finally, Seven Launch came on September 1st when it sent up 22 Starlink V2 mini satellites on the Starlink 6-13 mission. And of course, Launch number 8, coming up shortly in just 22 minutes, 18 seconds and counting. A little less than two minutes away from the start of the big vent. Another good visual indication that fueling is moving along smoothly. Now T minus 20 minutes, 38 seconds and counting. Just about 10 or so seconds away from the start of the big vent beginning. Also give us a bit of a gauge of how breezy it might be out there at Slick 40. And there we go, see the start of the so-called big vent. 
another good marker. That feeling is moving along as expected. All good signs. The next big milestone coming up after this is the loading of liquid oxygen onto the second stage of the rocket. That will come up at T minus 16 minutes. A T minus 19 minutes, five seconds and counting. This video coming again from Chuck Briggs and providing a nice view of the crew cargo access tower that is currently under development there at pad 40. It will add redundant capabilities for what's available at Launch Complex 39A over at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. Still very much in the works right now, but you can see there are some lights that have been added and pop on at night, which is a nice little addition here. There's a great pushed in view of that. Of course, Pad 39A gets quite busy between Falcon launches and converting it to Falcon Heavy configuration. That turnover process takes about three weeks or so. So having the ability to launch crew and cargo from Pad 40 will be a nice release valve, if you will, for some of the congestion that can pile up at 39A. No T minus 17 minutes, 42 seconds and counting. The big vent will be wrapping up in uh, just about a minute or so from now. want to thank Anna Kaiser for a generous $10 Super Chat donation. Says, watching from Orange Park. Thanks for making it possible for us to watch all the launches. Well, thank you for supporting us, Anna, and helping to make it all possible. We rely on... Super chat donations as well as channel membership that drives what we do here. So thanks to all of you who are helping support us in that way here at Space Flight Now. Another great way is by helping more people find the stream. To do that, it's quick and easy and free. You just hit the like button. Helps the YouTube algorithm do its thing and allows more people to find our coverage. As we are now less than 17 minutes to the liftoff of this Falcon 9 rocket, Supporting the Starlink 6-25 mission. Setting up 23 Starlink V2 mini satellites to low Earth orbit. Once this rocket launches and deploys its payload, SpaceX will then have more than 5,000 of its Starlinks on orbit. Here you see the end of the big vent. Locks loading will begin in just over... Apologies, Siri on my iPhone decided that I was talking to it. I most assuredly wasn't. But we can all relate with that. Now T minus 15 minutes, 48 seconds and counting.
No T minus 15 minutes, 17 seconds and counting. As we're coming into the last 15 minutes of this count, let's go ahead and talk about the vehicle that's going to be launching tonight. The Falcon 9 standing tall at just under 230 feet, about 70 meters in height with a diameter of 3.66 meters or 12 feet. Most of that made up by the first stage of the rocket, the bottom two thirds. This particular first stage, as we've mentioned earlier, has flown seven times before. Tail number 1077 going for its eighth flight tonight. At the base of the first stage are those nine Merlin engines, which burn a combination of rocket-grade kerosene and liquid oxygen, producing 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Around that engine compartment, you can see the black carbon fiber landing legs that will be deployed as the booster cruises in for a landing on the first or on the drone ship just read the instructions above the first stage is the inner stage it's a composite structure consisting of a aluminum honeycomb core surrounded by carbon fiber notable in part for those hypersonic grid fins you see there at the bottom of the inner stage these titanium winglets allow for steering as the Falcon 9 makes its way back down towards the drone ship like it will tonight or back to landing zone one as it does sometimes. In fact, SpaceX has shifted its launch and landing protocol. So now with crewed missions as it started with AX2 or excuse me, AX, yes, AX2 and uh, we'll do so again, presumably on Axiom's third flight to the International Space Station as well as the Crew 7 mission, the booster will return to landing zone one and those winglets help it do that. At the top of the inner stage are three mechanical latches that attach to the second stage. At first stage, main engine cutoff or MECO. High pressure helium is used to release those latches and four pneumatic pushers ensure that clean separation. The second stage engine nozzle also housed inside here. Speaking of that second stage, Powered by a single Merlin vacuum engine, or an MVAC engine, equipped with that large nozzle, optimized for burns in the vacuum of space, and it produces more than 200,000 pounds of thrust. It will be fired twice on today's mission, sending those 23 Starlink satellites into their intended orbit. The MVAC engine, like the first stage, burns the same propellant mix of RP-1 and LOX, and it will ignite for a third and final time after the satellites deploy that's for the deorbit burn, forcing that upper stage back into the atmosphere where it burns up and eliminates the risk of any unwanted space debris. And last but not least, we've got the payload fairings up top that contain the 23 Starlink satellites. They're made up of a carbon composite material. They're 13.1 meters or 43 feet tall and 5.2 meters or 17.1 feet in diameter. Two halves will be scooped up by the recovery vessel Bob after they float down gently under parachutes. Like the first stage booster, they will be brought back into Port Canaveral, refurbished and reused on a future flight. Now T minus 11 minutes, 33 seconds and counting.
No T minus 10 minutes, 19 seconds and counting. I want to thank Kevin Kelly for the $5 Super Chat donation. Thank you so much for supporting us, Kevin. Really appreciate that. I also want to thank Griffin B for a $10 Super Chat donation. Thank you, Griffin. It says they're watching from Fort Myers area. Great job, team. And thank you for supporting us in that. And one of our regulars, Alan Gable, joining us once again this evening with a very generous $20 Super Chat donation saying, let's light this candle. Certainly hope we see that tonight, Alan. Here's hoping. Thank you to the three of you for supporting us on those levels of Super Chat donation. And thank you to the more than 15,000, approaching 16,000 of you who are watching us live. If you haven't already, if you could hit the like button, it's a great way to also support us. That is free to do so and would be a big help in allowing more folks to find this coverage in the last nine minutes, nine seconds until liftoff. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so that you get notifications whenever we go live. Now T minus eight minutes, 53 seconds and counting. We're about uh, just about a minute and a half away from engine chill sequence. Involves a small amount of liquid oxygen flowing through the Merlin engine turbo pumps to cool them ahead of engine start. Now T minus eight minutes, 25 seconds and counting. Now T minus seven minutes, 40 seconds and counting. As we enter into the last handful of minutes here, let's go ahead and talk about the launch timeline after the Falcon 9 lifts off. The teaser liftoff still targeting 720 tonight as SpaceX is already in the fueling process. They are committed to going for that attempt at 720. For some reason, they do need to call a hold. Then they would... Stand down and look at the 24-hour turnaround. But again, assuming they are able to lift off in just a little over seven minutes. Then at T plus one minute, 12 seconds, the rocket would pass through the greatest point of aerodynamic pressure, otherwise known as max Q. At T plus two minutes, 26 seconds, that's when the nine Merlin engines will cease firing. First stage main engine cutoff, otherwise known as Miko. Three seconds later, First and second stages will separate. Followed up at T plus 2 minutes 35 seconds for second stage engine ignition SES-1 when that Merlin vacuum engine will come to life. T plus 3 minutes 5 seconds, the payload fairings will jettison away from the second stage, exposing the 23 Starlink satellites to the vacuum of space for the first time. At T plus 6 minutes 12 seconds, the first stage entry burn ignition will begin. The last 20 seconds, hopefully we'll be able to see that on one of our tracking cameras. We'll keep an eye out for that. At T plus 8 minutes and 5 seconds, the first stage landing burn will begin. That's unfortunately a little bit too far out for our cameras to see, but we'll get onboard views from SpaceX. At T plus 8 minutes, 26 seconds, the first stage uh, landing will happen. Followed up at T plus 8 minutes 39 seconds when the Merlin vacuum engine will cut off for Seco 1 and it'll go into a coast phase. It'll stay in that coast phase until T plus 54 minutes 9 seconds when the engine will reignite for just a quick 2 second burn, setting up for Starlink deployment. 
at T plus one hour, five minutes, 38 seconds. As it stands, we are T plus five minutes, 14 seconds and counting to the liftoff of this Starlink mission. As we enter into the final five minutes, I want to thank one of our new channel members, Barbara Bazemore Kiska. Apologies, Barbara, if I mispronounced your name, but thank you so much for joining us at the pad leader level. Barbara, like our other channel members, now has access to 4K live views of this and other launches from the Cape, both Kennedy Space Center and Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, as well as member-only videos and discounts at our online shop, shop that's spaceflightnow.com. Also want to thank Wayne Martin for a very generous $30 super chat. Thank you so much, Wayne, for supporting us at that level. T minus four minutes, 17 Check seconds counting. Started. Want to quickly show you a little bit of a celestial view. This is the planet Jupiter, of course. Those little two dots that are right above the planet, just to the upper right, those are two of Jupiter's moons, Ganymede and Io. To the bottom left, you're looking at Europa. Again, NASA is going to be sending the Europa Clipper spacecraft to explore Europa next October. Top right, you see the moon Callisto. Now T minus three minutes, 44 seconds and counting. Now less than three minutes to lift off. Just a quick bit of housekeeping. You'll notice our countdown clock is a little bit ahead of what you see on SpaceX's time at the bottom of your Stage screen. Lock, so our complete. clock is in real time here. The SpaceX time is on a little bit of a delay, but you see those clamp arms open and the transporter rector now pulled away from the Falcon 9 rocket there in position to support liftoff in less than two and a half minutes. Now less than two minutes to lift off. T minus one minute, 50 seconds and counting. Appreciate Stage the more than 30,000 of you who are joining us live. And we'll come back and read those super chats a little bit after liftoff. But know that I, I am seeing those and I will acknowledge them in just a little bit here. Now less than a minute and a half to lift off. As we approach the final minute of the count, T minus one minute, the Falcon 9's flight Ground computers will take control. Stages one and two will pressurize for flight. Now less than one minute. Falcon 9 is in startup. We need to call the vehicles in startup. You should hear the launch director give the go for launch in just a few seconds. Now T minus 33 seconds and counting. Go for launch. And you hear the call from the launch director. We are go for launch.
now coming up in 20 seconds, keeping an eye on the countdown. This is the point at which the mission scrubbed yesterday, so the count is continuing to press forward as we are now 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition. And liftoff. Liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket supporting the Starlink 6-25 minutes. The Falcon 9 has cleared the lightning towers. Now 15 seconds into flight. Now T plus 25 seconds. We're starting to hear the roar of the Falcon 9 here at the press site. Let's listen in. T plus 48 seconds and counting. This tracking view we're seeing from our own Adam Bernstein. Now one minute into flight. At this point, the Falcon 9 is approaching, traveling faster than the speed of sound. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Here you hear that call out. No T plus one minute, 21 seconds and counting. Some great tracking views from Adam there in the field. No T plus one minute, 30 seconds and counting. Stand back, chill has started. T plus two minutes, 17 seconds and counting. We're approaching main engine cutoff or Miko, getting some great tracking views and colors. There you see main engine cutoff. Followed by stage separation. And you'll see the Merlin vacuum engine come to life momentarily. Main engine cutoff. There you see it. No T plus two Age minutes, separation. 45 separation. seconds and counting. You might be able to see the reflection of the payload fairings as they fall away in just a few moments. Those two boxes on the right-hand side of your screen are from the SpaceX feed on a little bit of a delay there. That's why you're seeing it slightly behind our live pictures there on the left-hand side of your screen. A little bit of a jellyfish effect we're seeing this evening. And there you see those payload fairings falling away in this tracking view. Fairing separation confirmed. Glinting from the light of the Merlin vacuum engine there. Maybe a little bit of sunlight as well. The sun set not too terribly long ago. Those Mer er, Starlink satellites now exposed to the vacuum of space. As we continue to follow the Second stage engine burn at T plus three minutes, 42 seconds and counting. The box in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Both vehicles you see, are following nominal trajectories. See the hypersonic grid fins that are guiding the first stage booster, getting ready to start its entry burn. Just a little bit here. Now T plus four minutes, six seconds and counting. The next milestone coming up is at T plus 6 minutes, 12 seconds, when that entry burn will begin. It'll last 20 seconds or so. These tracking views you're seeing right now coming to us from Pete. Appreciate you, Pete.
No T plus four minutes, 45 seconds and counting. Now five minutes into flight. Again, if you didn't catch what I said earlier, the reason that our count-up clock is different from SpaceX's, ours is in real time. The SpaceX clock at the bottom of the screen, that is on a bit of a delay. So that's why there's discrepancy and why you were seeing some of the events happen on our tracking Both cameras. vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. A little bit ahead of what you're seeing in the SpaceX feed. Those are onboard views. The top right-hand box is from the first stage. The bottom is the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. You can see a little bit of the curve of the Earth with just a little bit of sunlight providing an accent to it. Really nice picture there. Now six minutes into flight. In about 10 seconds, the first stage entry burn, entry burn will begin. There you go. And Pete getting a one FTS has saved. great tracking views of this. We'll see it on the SpaceX view right about now. T plus six minutes, 23 seconds in count, or excuse me, 33 seconds. Stage one entry burn startup. The entry burn is now completed in real time. It'll wrap up momentarily on the SpaceX feed as well. Stage two FTS has saved. Stage one entry burn shut down. Things continue to move nominally in this flight as the first stage getting ready to make its landing on the drone ship. Just read the instructions here in just a couple of minutes. That landing burn will begin at T plus eight minutes, five seconds, so just a little less than a minute from now. It should land right about T plus eight minutes, 26 seconds. Unfortunately, because of how far out it Both is. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. How low it will be on the horizon compared to where we are. We won't be able to see that from our tracking cameras from either Pete Chuck or Adam, but we do have the onboard views from SpaceX, the left-hand side of your screen now, showing the first stage. It's dark because it is in nighttime from the stage booster's perspective, of course. Right-hand side is that Merlin vacuum engine continuing on its burn. Looking back at the pad there as we await the landing burn beginning. In real time, it's Stage two, already on their way. On the SpaceX feed, it'll come up starting in just about one second. Stage one, landing burn. There we go. It passes prologue. The box on the right-hand side of the screen will flip to a view from the drone ship. There it goes. Stage one, landing leg deploy. You can see it coming to view from the perspective of the first stage. And touchdown of booster 1077, having made stage its one, eighth landing flight. Launch and landing now in the books. MVAC shut down. A T plus... Nine minutes and counting. Hear the call for MBAC shutdown, that upper stage going into a coast phase. No, nope. insertion. Just one last quick little peek at that Merlin vacuum engine, which is now going to remain in a coast phase until T plus 54 minutes, nine seconds, at which point it will conduct a quick two second burn. Followed by Starlink deployment at T plus one hour, five minutes, and 38 seconds.
Now T plus 11 minutes, five seconds and counting. As promised, let me go back and acknowledge and thank all of the wonderful folks who help support our coverage with the Super Chat donations here. It's going back to just before launch, Robert Hurt with a $5 Super Chat saying, hoping for a great first launch for Riley, Jordan, and Samson. Well, certainly got a launch tonight. It all went off without a hitch following last night's scrub, so happy for the three of you that you were able to see your first launch. Congratulations. SpaceX launches about every four days, so if you have the opportunity to see it from here on the Space Coast, it's a good little addition to a Florida vacation. I want to thank D. Binner for a $10 Super Chat donation. Again, this coming from before liftoff, saying, let's light this candle. No scrubbing allowed tonight. Unfortunately, a scrub was not on the docket tonight. James Miranda with a $5 Super Chat. Thank you so much, James, saying thank you so much for posting this. Shout out to our little explorer, Anna Marcella. Mommy, Daddy, love you. Oh, that's very sweet, James. And hello, Anna. Roseanne DeVasto, one of our regulars, joining us again, saying, wow. Uh, thanks for identifying my sky. I am in Port St. John, directly opposite Slick 40, watching and feeling the roar of the engine never ceases to amaze. It's been a minute since I've seen a launch from Port St. John, but that is an excellent launch spot for a Pad 40 launch. So glad the skies were clear for you this evening, Roseanne, and thanks for supporting us. Moritz Coetzee. Apologies, Maurice, if I mispronounced your name there, but really appreciate the support. Saying shout out to Starsat Africa, and also thank you guys for the stream, watching all the way from South Africa, which is very cool. I know we do have an international audience that joins us for these launches, but it's always great to hear from all the places that y'all are watching. So don't know exactly what time it is there in South Africa, but thank you for presumably either staying up late or getting up early to join us for a launch coverage. Really appreciate it, Moritz. SG, one of our regulars here on the stream with a $10 super chat and a thank you, Corgi. Thanks, SG, for joining us and supporting. Bob Wright with a $5 super chat with a happy hype hippo. Thank you so much, Bob. Sir Uncle Ned with a $5 super chat says, this is me saying thanks for the amazing tracking views and great stream. Providing commentary, SpaceX refuses to. We're happy to step in and always provide launch views and commentary for all the missions that we were able to. And thanks to folks like Sir Uncle Ned for supporting us, as well as Mark Otto, one of our channel members who donated 10 Spaceflight Now memberships. Really appreciate that, Otto, for sharing the love there. And to those of you who are now new channel members, welcome. Hope you enjoy the benefits of that and love to have you stick around as channel members if you're able to. RJS or RJ Spain 56 with a five dollar super chat. Thank you, RJ. Saying the landing gear for the first stage reminds me of Lost in Space. Trying to think if you're thinking of the Lost in Space in its original run or the Netflix reboot, which was also quite good. Thank you for the support with the super chat. Norman Reitzel with a very specific $12.79 super chat says, you know, my whole life everyone said landing in an orbital class booster is impossible, so I never get tired of watching Falcon deploy landing legs and touchdown. It is certainly quite the sight to see Nick Burton with a generous $20 Super Chat donation with a ecstatic heart emoji there. Thank you so much, Nick. Really appreciate that. And last but not least, I believe this is the last one. Lori Jones Wilson with a $1 or excuse me, a $2 Super Chat donation. Thank you so much, Lori, and to everyone who's helped support our coverage this evening. Now T plus 15 minutes, 56 seconds and counting. Of course, because SpaceX has wrapped up the 
uh, broadcast from their perspective, we're unable to continue tracking the mission with uh, telemetry or onboard views, so we're not able to show you satellite deployment. In a little less than an hour, this is what the deployment of the Starlink V2 mini satellites will look like, or thereabouts. This is from an earlier Starlink launch that happened back on October 21st. You can see the reflection of the second stage of the Falcon 9 there, reflected from the Starlinks. As the full stack drifts away as one collective, then each of the satellites will separate in time unfurl their solar arrays and begin to drift to their own distinct operating orbit. So again, this is what the views of deployment will look like. Uh, SpaceX sharing this video from an earlier launch. They will not be providing live views of tonight's Starlink deployment, but perhaps they will share another video from what this Starlink batch looks like as it drifts away from the Falcon 9 upper stage coming up in just a little less than an hour. And one last photo I want to leave you with. This is from our photographer Michael Kane. He was off principal duty from tonight, but this was what he was able to capture all the way over in Lake Nona from the second stage engine burn there shortly after stage separation. So great jellyfish view from Michael. And again, if you're not following Michael and Adam Bernstein on X, formerly known as Twitter, you certainly should. They have lots of great launch photography from this and many other missions from the past and yet to come. And you see there, Pad 40, now devoid of its Falcon 9 rocket, but as I mentioned, SpaceX launches about every four days. So we are looking forward to the next Starlink launch coming up shortly. We're eyeing the next Starlink launch toward the end of the week. Of course, because this launch was supposed to launch last night and then scrubbed and then ended up launching tonight, we'll have to keep an eye on exactly when SpaceX will attempt to launch the next Starlink mission, Starlink 6-26. But... Actually, we do have it confirmed. It'll be this Friday, another evening launch. So keep an eye on our website, spaceflightnow.com, in the launch schedule section of the site. We'll have the specific time posted there. Oh, and RJ Spain, uh, 56, clarified he meant the original Lost in Space because he was old enough to watch it on TV. The Jupiter 2 had landing gear like the ones used on the first stage. Oh, that's very cool. Having the name Will Robinson Smith, I've only, I mean, I have seen the original show, not in its entirety, but clips in a couple episodes here or there. So thank you for clarifying and thank you for another $10 Super Chat donation. Also, thanks to Norman Reitzel for upgrading his membership to the mission specialist level. Really appreciate that, Norman.
and T plus 21 minutes, two seconds before we go, now that this mission has officially launched. Let's close out our broadcast with the mission stats as they stand as of now. This was the eighth flight of a Falcon 9 booster, or of this Falcon 9 booster, I should say, booster 1077. This was the 268th Falcon 9 launch to date, the 74th Falcon 9 launch of 2023. This was the 212th Falcon booster reflight, the 78th SpaceX orbital launch of 2023. It was the 90th SpaceX orbital launch in the last 365 days. The 151st SpaceX orbital launch from pad 40. The 206th overall orbital launch from this pad. And finally, this was the 59th orbital launch from Cape Canaveral in 2023 between Cape Canaveral Space Force Station and the Kennedy Space Center. Launch number 60 coming up this Friday. Close things out by thanking QFP Pro 21 for joining us at the pad leader level as a new channel member. Thank you so much, QF. Really appreciate you supporting our coverage this way. And with that, we'll go ahead and close things out for tonight. Want to thank Pete Carsons and Chuck Briggs for once again providing us some excellent tracking views of the Falcon 9 rocket in flight and for a quick glimpse at Jupiter and its moons. A quick cameo appearance by Michael Kane with a nice shot from over in Lake Nona. Or Adam Bernstein for pulling double duty with some launch photography. Looking forward to seeing that in just a bit. As well as providing some stellar tracking views from here at the press site. Stephen Young, captain of our ship, running the technical aspects of our show. I'm Will Robinson-Smith, and most importantly, want to thank all of you for joining us this evening, supporting what we do here at Space Flight Now. Look forward to the next and every launch thereafter. Again, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you know when we go live, as we do. Catch all of our videos as they are uploaded. Thank you so much for sticking with us, coming back if you were with us yesterday for round two when SpaceX was finally able to make this flight happen. Really appreciate all of you. Be good to yourself, be good to others, and we will see you next time.